Hello, welcome to Cable Plus Property, always your number one online educative platform on all issues related to land and landed properties. And as you know, at Cable Plus Property, our aim is to ensure that all Nigerians and non-Nigerians have easy access to every information related to land acquisition, land procurement, building construction, registration, documentation, and obtaining planning permit. In this episode, I'll be speaking with the structural engineer for X Excellent. A past president of the Nigerian Institution of Structural Engineers. He's no other than engineer Dr. Victor Olushegun Oyenuga. Come with me. Engineer Dr. Victor Olushegun Oyenuga was born in Ilishan Remo, Ogun State, Nigeria, 67 years ago. After his primary and secondary school education, he proceeded to Yaba College of Technology, Yaba Lagos, for both his ND and HND in civil engineering and building in 1975 and 1978, respectively. After his service here, he enrolled at the University of Lagos, Akoka, Lagos State, for his bachelor's degree in civil engineering in 1981 and graduated with the first class division. In 1983, he proceeded to the famous Imperial College of Science, Technology and Medicine, University of London, and was one of the best three graduating students in 1984 in the MSc DIC Public Health Engineering class. He joined teaching in 1979 as an instructor at Yaba College of Technology, Yaba, Lagos, and left in 1989 as a senior lecturer and acting head of the Department of Civil Engineering, Lagos State Polytechnic, Ikorodu. During this period, he upgraded the civil engineering laboratories and prepared the program for NBTE accreditation, which was achieved in the same year. Engineer Dr. Yenuga joined MS Vazin's concept group as a technical officer in 1976 and became a partner in the firm in 1991. In this firm, he executed and led out in many major engineering designs, including the Teslim Balogun Stadium Complex, Lagos, Ikeja Plaza, faculty buildings, stadium complex to mention but a few. Engineer Dr. Oyenuga is a fellow and past president of the Nigerian Institution of Structural Engineers and also a fellow of the Nigerian Institution of Civil Engineers and the Nigerian Institution of Highway and Transportation Engineers. He served on Regulation and Control Committee of the Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, Koren, for eight years, was also a member of the NSC Board of Fellows and many times examiners for Koren, NSC and Nigerian Institution of Structural Engineers. He was also a member of the fifth board of the Council of Registered Builders of Nigeria, Coburn, from 2013 to 2017 as a registered builder. He's the author of Design and Construction of Foundation, Concise Reinforced Concrete Design, etc. That's amongst many books that he has written. He's happily married with children. So if you're watching this video, join me on this episode with no other than engineer Dr. Victor Olushegun Oyenuga. Good afternoon, sir. It's so good to have you on the Cable Plus Property good Show. Afternoon. Oh, yeah, welcome once again. So our viewers would like to know what exactly is civil engineering in general and structural engineering in particular. And also, why did you choose to be a structural engineer? Well, uh, civil engineering is actually uh, an offshoot. The first engineering that we know is mechanical, so it's a uh, military. But some civilians started taking interest. So the military people now say, okay, these civil engineers. So you can see that that's why you say that civil engineering is the father of all engineering. Because minus the military, it is the civil engineering. It is from civil engineering that uh, we have mechanical, we have electrical, and then mm. from there we have preparation of other engineering bodies for today. Now civil engineering, as it is being practiced, uh, is, uh, is the mother of many engineering, uh, we can call them uh, subdivisions. And one of them is the institution of uh, structural engineers, that is structural engineering. Mm. You also have highway and airfield engineering. You have hydraulics engineering that is with uh, uh, wolves and jetties. We have um, 
structural engineering this with buildings and then also have and then bridges we also have uh, water and water resources you know engineering all these are still part and parcel we also have soil you know soil uh, those who are specializing in soil they are also civil engineers the yeah. bulk of us are actually like uh, those of us in the institution of structural engineers i think more than 95 percent of us have degrees in civil engineering yeah. so structural engineering are most of the time taken at the high level you know at a master's level and then um, except uh, in this country we have uniben you know we the institute of structural engineering wrote that they should start that program and some years ago they started so you have people who are now having a degree in structural engineering you know as a but whether you are civil or you are structural engineer, you have civil engineering or you are you have structural engineering, the most important thing is that it is your area of specialization. That is the area that interests you in terms of practice. That is actually what makes you, uh, you know, who you are. It may interest you that uh, my first degree is in civil engineering, and as you have said, but my second degree is actually in uh, water. Mm. But because I've been you know, practicing structures right from 76, especially in this office, so that was why uh, I took so much interest. And that was actually the reason why I decided not to go for a master's in structural engineering because I've been practicing structures. Mm. So structural engineering, just to answer your question directly, is, a, is an offshoot, is a branch, is a specialized section of civil, civil engineering. engineering. So of, of all this um, type of, of branches of engineering that yes. you have mentioned, which of them or how many of them or what are those ones that are concerned with building? When we're talking of building as a phenomenon, who are those well, engineers? The, we can involved? say probably two. Okay. One, the major one is structural engineering because that is with the safety of the building mm. I mean, and the structure. You know, for example, like human body, you have, you have uh, in the bones. Uh -huh. So you can say that the structural engineer is actually the bone of the building. Mm. So, you know, from the bones, now you now have the flesh. So that makes that person look beautiful. So that's the finishes. We call that finishes. So it is called that the, uh, the second aspect, which is somehow related, is civil engineering, that is the roads. Because, for example, in an estate, you have the buildings, you also have the roads. So those are the two major areas, and then probably water because you have water supply too. How about yeah. electrical? And well, electrical. Okay. Those are services. Oh. Yes, those are services. I'm talking. I thought you are talking of the civil engineering area. Okay. For civil engineering area, you have structural engineering that's the major. Then followed by highway, which is has to do with the roads within the estate or within the town, and then water. Which is, uh, you know, which is shared actually between us and mechanical. Okay. You know, uh -huh, you know, because uh, when you come to individual building, the mechanical people take over because it's more of a plumbing. But when you are talking of water going to an estate or water running through a town, then that's probably a civil engineering affair. That's where I did you know, my own master's. Really. Okay, so electrical engineering is not it's considered... It's under services. Okay. It's, a, it's a electrical engineering is under services. Okay. It's not part of civil engineering. Oh. So when you look at a, a, a building, for example, you have five major consultants. You have the architect that produce how the building will look like in terms of beauty, in terms of shape, in terms of whatever. Then you have the structural engineers that ensure that that building as put forward by the architect stands mm. and you can walk in and walk out and be safe. Then you have the electrical and mechanical. We call them services engineer. They make sure that you are comfortable. If there is need for AC, if there is need for lift, then those ones are there. If then there is light. So those are work of services uh, in the engineers. Then you have the quantity surveyor who makes sure that the cost, there is no cost overrun. That's why you see that when they advertise for a project, ah, we are going to build the stadium in Surulere and the cost is uh, so, so, so millions in those days, now billions. It's because somebody who is a country surveyor has actually worked and they find out the cost. It may be, it may not be actually, at the end of the day, it may be a bit less or a bit more, but at least the cost of that project at the completion 
within within will be within the range. So those are the five uh, consultants. If it's an estate, then you need a civil engineer that will uh, make sure that the roads are in order. Well, apart from the town planner, who must have done the planning, mm -hmm. you know, I, they do the layout of uh, of the various buildings. You know, I mean, of the various areas, and then give the zone whether this area should be uh, of bungalow or should be two story or can have a high rise zone. You cannot have high rise because uh, plane is going through this area, like in Nikeja. There's a limit to how much you can build in Nikeja because there is a flight zone. You know, so these are the consultants that uh, are actually uh, involved when you come up, when you talk of uh, building generally. We'll go on a short commercial break and we'll be right back. Cable Plus Property, the hub of professionals in the built environment and the number one online educative platform on all issues related to land and landed property. At Cable Plus Property, our aim is to ensure that all Nigerians and non-Nigerians have at the tip of your fingers, free of charge, all information on landed matters. We provide you with all information you need to know about land procurement, land documentation and development, planning permit procurement, building construction and so on. Join us today for free by subscribing to our YouTube channel, like and follow us on our social media platforms and check us on our website www.cableplusproperty.com. Together, we shall make our environment better. Spend and build right. Welcome back. This is still the Cable Plus Property Show, and I'm still talking to engineer Dr. Victor Olushegun Oyenuga. Okay, still talking about building now. What is your take on building collapse? What do you think are the major causes, and who should take the blame for it? Who should take the blame? Number one person is the client. The client? Yes. Okay. How, why do you say that? Well, you may be surprised. It's the client. For example, you want to. Uh, you want to build a house in a poor, relatively poor, poor even if it is a very good soil area. And you tell the client, oh, guy, you have to do soil test. He said, no, 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 no. They didn't do soil test in the next house. So why do I have to waste my money? The question is, how much is this money we are talking about? For example, there was a project we were handling for a government. It's about two billion naira. We had to come there as a supervisor consultant. So already designed. You know, then I said, Where is the sort of There's no sort test. You are building a two billion naira project without a third test. I said, Well, Mr. Governor, you have to stop this project. And probably because then I did my position as I was then the president of the Institute of Structural Engineers, he has no choice and he's also a professional. They're not in the built environment. He said, Well, if the engineer said, You stop, please stop work. And we did the sort test. How much did it cost us? 250,000 naira. Wow. 250,000 naira. The man assumed that the soil capacity, that is, a square meter of that soil, can carry 200 kilonewton, 200 loads. By the time we did the soil test, that soil can only carry 100. So that building will have just come down, you know, on completion. So we had to, fortunately, we are just, uh, we are just digging. We had to reposition additional column. You know what you people copy as additional columns with bases in order to reduce the load for the already existing one. You haven't gone beyond the foundation, so you can see that the point I'm making here is that the cost of soil test is so infinitesimal. If it's less than 0.01 percent of the cost of the building, you know you want to even your ordinary house. There's no house you build now with less than 50 million. How much are you going to? Do? Even you are going to do a borehole. The whole thing won't cost you more than two hundred to two fifty thousand naira. But the client will say, no, 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 it's not necessary. Whereas it is important. So that's why I said client is number one culprit. Hmm. Then secondly, clients also don't believe some clients don't believe in professionalism. You know? They believe that uh, uh, this is but, but what I tell them is that look, this building we are building here and there. They are not a natural method of building houses. A natural method is to put mud together and make it, uh, you know, a bungalow and be comfortable. Which I mean, you know, but now we are building high rise. We borrowed it from them. 
and then if we borrow from them, then we should follow as much as possible the various methods they are using in their own country to make sure that our our values. So that is number that is number uh, two. So client is the major the major people that are responsible for building collapse. Okay. This, so, uh, uh, sorry to cut you short. So, from your explanation, if a professional is called to handle a job and the client turns out to be very stubborn or not ready to follow the rules, must is this a little must for the professional to continue with the job? You can no. easily drop it and say you're not doing again. No, we, 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 we I mean, we, we once you know you, you, you're, you're, knowing, you are knowing the repercussion of going on, with no, that once job. you know that your advice is not being followed. The best thing is for you to stop. We have uh, we were handling a project, just an up and down a public a private uh, dwelling house, and then we I told the architect who is uh, who was then a professor, I think it's now late, that look I can't trace the load of this building to the foundation. He said no 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 no, it's correct. Uh, I should go to architect data. I should look at this. I should I tell Madam I don't know what is architect data. I'm the structural engineer and I'm saying that I can't trace the load down to foundation any load that cannot be traced to foundation there's no way that building can stand the man insisted that no that you cannot change you cannot change that you have to write the clients who happen to be a very good friend of one of our guys and then we withdraw we withdraw from that project we told him that sorry if the man cannot do this then we are not interested so the point i'm making is that you are the consultants you are the professional you will be blamed if there are issues the man will say, ah, the man said I should do this and I did this and I pay him his full fee. Now see what I'm getting. So if any of the consultants is not cooperating and the client also is not cooperating, withdraw your services immediately. And then if you have, you have submitted any documentation to government, for example, if they use your paper and your drawings and go for approval, then write the letter to the client that you are withdrawing from the services and send a copy to the uh, authority. You know, like in Lagos now, the Lagos uh, Planning Authority. Said, I was the one who handled this project, but today I'm withdrawing my services because of one, two, three. If possible, copy your professional, uh, you know, your professional organization. Current, Carbon, you know, Acon, uh, top, top Rec and things like that. Copy them. So that in case of any problem, they will say yes, this man complained and he withdrew. And then your hand will be off. So the client is the only one to be held responsible for building collapse? Not necessarily, you know, it's not necessarily. The, the fault can also be from the designer, okay, especially the structural engineering designer. You know, I won't say the structural engineer, but the structural engineering designer. Okay. Yeah, because there's a difference. Is that you being favor? You know, being um, you're trying to play favoritism if you're not going to mention the structural. No, because uh, well, to the glory of God, there is no building that's collapsed in this country that is traceable to any member of the Nigerian Institution of Structural Engineers. Hmm. To the glory of God, none, not one. We have some that uh, some engineers have been inducted, but none of them has been a member. You know, it's not that we are better or we, you know, we know better. We have, just as I said, that, you know, overseas we have projects handled by very senior structural engineers, handled by very, you know, competent contractors, and we still have collapses. But, you know, but in this country, that's why I'm saying that, that, you know, we have structural engineering design. That structural engineering design may not necessarily be handled by the structural engineer. So that's why I want to say that the structural engineering designer can also be held responsible. You can also be a structural engineer. You can also be another uh, another person. So that's why I'm trying to. Uh, I did, that's why I don't want to use the word the structural engineer because if it's not a structural engineer, then you cannot call him a structural engineer. But it's the structural engineering designer. He can also be held uh, responsible too. What's the had, difference between a structural structural engineer and a structural engineering designer? Well, a structural engineer is somebody in this country. That is either registered by current okay. as a structural engineer. Like me now, I'm registered by current as a civil engineer. Okay? So, and uh, if you are registered as a civil engineer by current, then find your way to the Nigerian Institution of Structural Engineers, where you will sit down 
they will give you one question all right and you will spend seven solid hours mm. answering that question wow three and a half hours an open book these are my books you can carry your yenuga and start to open them even if you ask me what is the formula for design of beam i will show you i will tell you i will not show, uh, tell you i can go and get a book and open it for you and they give it to you or even i can write it down for you so it's not a matter of uh, uh, a joke no well what the interested in is do you understand what we're asking you to do is the concept of engineering that's in you that is in you that we're interested in after 10 and a half hours we stop you we give you food give you mr biggs you know <laughs> i am not uh, <laughs> i'm not promoting that this thing, but we give you uh, you know food give you uh, coca-cola and then you know refreshment not refreshment food and oh. water to wow. drink you know then so after the for ahead, about 30 then. minutes so after 30 minutes you go as a gentleman let us start i uh, continue again for another and a half hours wow. so once you pass that exam then you'll be registered by the institution then you can now call yourself a structural engineer though you are registered as a civil engineer but you can now call yourself a structural engineer but if you have a degree in structural engineering you can easily be registered by current as structural engineer so those are the two routes you know is either you have a degree and you go straight to current and they register you as a structural engineer or you are registered by current as a civil engineer because you have a degree in civil engineering and then you go to the um, the Nigerian Institution of Structural Engineers and get qualified. But again, we are not too strict. If you have been practicing as a civil engineer and you have been practicing uh, the design for quite a while, you have what you call my short route. Like I came in through the my short route. I've designed the stadium, but it's the glory of God, all the structures in the Tesla Balogun Stadium. So for me now to apply, for somebody to now ask me to start doing the seminar paper. I mean, it will look ridiculous. That what else? The state has been designed since, you know, many years back. The thing is standing. So what else? So we know once you are about 45 and you are practicing structural engineering for over 15 years, we simply call you, we call it matured route. We sit mm. you down, ask one or two questions. Not every one of them pass. Mm. You ask one or two questions or based on what you have submitted. This drawing you have submitted this and this can you explain this why did you design this in this format you know you then tell us once we are satisfied then you'll be registered mm -hmm. as a structural engineer so those are the two routes there that we follow as far as this country is concerned alternatively if you are a member of high structure you know for in london that's the zero structural engineers in london then currently we register you as a structural engineer and then we will also accept you too I say we won't go through any rigor of whatever, mm -hmm. whatever, because you are already a structural engineer in, 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 the, in the UK. Okay, so a structural engineering designer is one that is not registered. Mm -mm. A, structural, a, a structural engineering designer can be somebody who is not registered and can also be a structural engineer. Okay. I just use the term structural engineering designer to cover whether the person is registered oh, or the person okay. is not registered. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. I mean, we have uh, some civil engineers, even some who don't uh, uh, even have much to do in terms of education. They will tell you they, they can also design uh, uh, structures. Mm. So now, those are the people okay. we call, uh, you, know, you know, that they are not structural engineers, but they design, they design structures, yes. Mm. But we want to recommend uh, people like that for any project mm -hmm. because just as i've said there is a that they, they can be for example if there is a, if a building is designed and there's a problem the decision of structural engineer cannot uh, you know punish the designer unless that person is the member mm -hmm. of the institution just like uh, the also with current if there's a problem and the member the person is not registered by current now Korean has the right to take the person to court for violating for paratism engineering without being an engineering personnel. Mm. Uh -huh. But you know, before, there's only can go. Sorry, sir. That man is not our member. So there's nothing we can do. We can't uh, we can't punish him. But now Korean can take you to court that you are practicing engineering illegally. 
it's been a pleasure talking to you, sir. I would like you to say something about the Cable Plus property endeavor, this interview and the company itself. Well, I think uh, <laughs> I will say, I think the less I can say that I'm impressed, you know, for an organization like yours to take it upon themselves to enlighten uh, the, the general public. And then my prayer is that uh, God will give them the ear to listen and the spirit to follow. Mm -hmm. Because if this is done, it's then that you know that you have fulfilled your mission. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, uh, so I want to say thank you very much for the opportunity and then uh, honestly, I'm impressed and uh, I wish you well. Well, I'm not surprised, I think, uh, if you know, some of your people are from my school, or, or that's the Abba College of Technology and then, uh, you know, I continue to tell you that uh, you have only two polytechnics in this country, in fact, in the world. Java College of Tech and others. <laughs> so, thank you very much. Thank you for your thank time, you. sir. It was great talking to you. Mm. And that was a conversation with engineer Dr. Victor Olushegun Oyenuga, the past president of the Nigerian Institution of Structural Engineers. I tell you, I think I can pass on as a structural engineer right now. Do forget to hit the subscribe button below, share this video with friends and family, and also head onto our social media pages on Facebook and Instagram at Cable Plus Property. My name is Oiza. I'll see you next time.